Hello, I'm Atuba George. Now I bless God for this whole week. I bless God for what He's doing, you know, bringing His word to us. Now, as, as we do this, I'm also excited because the word of the Lord is coming to me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we receive today's daily bread. And even as your word is given to us, we're enriched. And we learn to follow you today. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now then, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And we, we, we're in verse 18. Let me just run down from 17. For this cause have I sent unto you, Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my way, of my ways which be in Christ, as I teach in every church. So he's sending Timothy to them. Say, hey, go, go, go bring them up to speed with what's going on. See, because we learn daily. We keep learning. We keep learning. The, the things, see, where, what I knew two years ago, what I knew even last year, by this year is upgraded. That, that's, what, that's what I found out working with the Lord. So you can't be stagnant. You, you can't say, I've read the whole Bible before. You keep reading and reading and reading and reading and reading and reading and reading. All your life, you keep reading and reading. And... Listen, even if it's only the Bible you read, the best of information will come out from it. Say, how? How can you just read only the Bible? I'm telling you the truth. That, you see, the, the difference, or the most important thing, is that the word of the Lord comes to you. I'm telling you the truth. So, reading the Bible creates an atmosphere for the word of the Lord to come to you. So, you're just reading, and you read something. And, you know, someone was sharing with me, like the Lord said, we, we should read the book of Proverbs. You know, so, someone was sharing with me how he, he was reading the book of Proverbs, and there were some things he jotted down from, the, from one of the early chapters, that chapter one or chapter three. There are some things he jotted down that the, a few days later, an issue arose, you know, that he had to handle. And that was the wisdom that he drew from. See, now that's how the word of the Lord affects our lives. So you want to take this thing, then you remember, oh, no wonder the word says this. Okay, I'm, I'm going to line up with the word of God. And I'll do it the word way. And he got the result. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Now that's what it is. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Now verse 18 says, Now some are puffed up as though I would not come to you, but I will surely come to you shortly, if the Lord will and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. Now, Paul has been hearing some stories about certain people. And he says, okay, I'm going to come. Now, that's why Paul was writing these letters to them. See, because, because, because of his long absence, many people have been coming to tell them all sorts of things, teach them all sorts of things. And now Paul is trying to correct, hey guys, let my labor not be in vain. That's actually what Paul was doing. Let my labor not be in vain. So, hey, you guys, these are my ways. I'm sending Timothy to you. But all right, some are thinking I will not come again. I'm surely going to come. Now, let's, let's go on and finish this. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. You know, just like today, you know, there are, there are people who, who argue. All they do is argue. The, the Bible says, you know, when you hear because they, they, they grace and um, the law and you know those 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 arguments are i call them foolish see <laughs> the power of god is supposed to be at work in you so someone is at saying um, if 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 a believer commits sin the grace you can't you, you the believer cannot be judged because of the message of grace the power in the gospel will stop you from sinning that's how it works. It's not about whether grace or the power. See, that's why Paul said, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. It's not in, see, we know a lot. But you know, the, you know the secret? The secret is the power that that knowledge brings inside of us. I found this out that most times we even do 
the right thing before we realize that it is the right thing that we have done according to scriptures. Now that's the power of the Holy Ghost. So when you submit yourself to be led by the Spirit of God, He leads you in the way of power. Now what do I mean power? You know sometimes when people hear power, all they can think about is you know, power, exert, exerting power. You know, you, you walk in a place, people are crying, people are falling. And I say that man is powerful. Oh. You know, the power of the Holy Ghost is very strong in that man. Yet this same, this same person cannot hold himself from sin. See, no power is working in that person. It's not in that person that power is working. The power is working in that environment and the person is taking advantage of it. When, do you know what it means for the, for the power of God to be made manifest in you? People will look at you and ask you, how, how did you come about that wisdom? When, when it seems everybody is stuck, everybody have gotten to their end, and they said, hey, hey, hold, hold on guys, let me pray. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We we'll receive your wisdom. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You know what? This is what we're going to do. Let's do it like this. Like, wow, man, this guy, you're wise. Oh, that is the power of the Holy Ghost at work in that person. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's not the power of God. Of course, the power of God will heal the sick. The power of God will raise the dead. The power, but you see, the power working inside of you, for example, you're not sick. Does that mean the power of God will not work? You're not dead to be raised. Does that mean the power of God will not work? See? The power of God works in the formation of your character, the formation of your attitude. So someone sees that your life is changing before their eyes. What do you think is going on? The power of God is working. Now, no, I'm not talking about now you're blowing big grammar. But see, someone looks at your life, you're still the same. No power is at work. That's what Paul was talking about, that the gospel is not in words. See, verse 21, in the last verse in, in chapter 4, What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod or in love and in the spirit of meekness? He's asking his children this question. How do you want me to come? Now let's just go into chapter 5. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Whoa. It says, now, now, now I want you to follow. It says, it is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. And such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. Wonderful. Now, Paul got report from this church. So he's addressing the issues now remember where he started he says look when i came to you i didn't want to seek you know to know what is in you and he goes on to say in chapter three that look i couldn't speak to you as spiritual people but as carnal people because the things you do they are carnal the utterance for deep spiritual things couldn't come why because you're you're, you're carnally minded now here he begins to address those issues so this is reported among you that there's fornication among you, the kind of fornication that you don't even hear among the Gentiles. Isn't that awesome? You know, one time I was talking to someone and, and, and the person says, you know, the Bible says, where sin abounds, grace did much more abide. And I said, yes. So can we, can we, so it says, where you see so much sin, there's so much grace available. So I said, okay, can we look at it this other way? Does that mean that where you see the grace of God working tremendously, <laughs> there's a high level of sin <laughs> in that place? See, we must be careful, you know, how we handle the things of God. That's why Paul says, first of all, we must be stewards. So now he says, a kind of fornication that even amongst the... How did this get into the church? Because this is the truth. Wherever God has his eyes on, Satan automatically shifts his attention to that place. And that's the simplest meaning of where sin abounds. Grace did much more abound. So it's not Satan that goes first before God comes. No. Where, where you see Satan operating in a high fashion. See, when you see so much demonic activity in somebody's life, that's just to tell you that God is interested in that thing. 
Well, that's the truth. So what does Satan do? He wants to destroy that thing and render it useless before God. But you know the truth? He's always late. I know another truth. You can never do anything against the truth. Everything you do will be for the truth eventually. Now he says, thank you, Lord. Verse 2, he says, And ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that had done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I verily, for I verily, as absent in body but present in spirit, have judged already, as though I were present concerning him that had so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Follow this now. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such and one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Did you see that? Now Paul was addressing a specific incident that happened because he got the report. And what's the report? That someone in the church had had sexual contact with his father's wife. In the church so, so, so you know, like how, how did this fellow, is this fellow born again in the first place? <laughs> so how, how did such a fellow, you know, sometimes you hear somebody do something and, and he, he, it's, so, as it, it's not just that the person did something, you see how terrible. So you try to imagine how the mind was able to conceive, conceive that kind of action and not just conceive it, actually go through in carrying it out. That you hear a strong, or even a, a, a pastor rapes someone. And then you, you wonder how did he conceive it in his heart? What time did he have? So he conceived it in his heart. It didn't take a moment, it didn't take a day. He, he determined, I'm going to do this thing. And then the Spirit of God was not there to rebuke him inside. And he thought about it day one, day two, and then actually carried it out. Such a person is not saved in the first place. There are things people will do. See, they, they may hide under the cloak of religion. They may hide under the cloak or, or the pastor's collar. But you see, Jesus said something very powerful. By their fruits, you shall know them. What does it mean fruit? By the things they produce. So their words, check the consistency of their words. You will know them. Their actions, the things you hear, the things you see them do, those are their fruit. Fruit is what you produce, what comes out of you. Since by their fruit, you will know them. So Paul said, this is how to handle such a person. <laughs> he said, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, my spirit with you, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of what? Of the flesh, that the spirit might be saved in the day of the Lord. Cast that person out. You handle him over to the devil. Now, what does it mean handle him over to the devil? It simply means you as believers, come, you come together and say, this guy is not part of us. He is not. Because as that person is now, he's become a spot and blemish. So when the Lord reveals such a thing, you separate the person from amongst you. Oh, that's what you do. Now, we're going to look at this tomorrow. Praise God. Father, thank you for your spirit of righteousness and holiness that is made manifest in us by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, receive your portion today. Amen. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.